Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All you know that the world financial crisis showed vulnerability of many economies all over the world. Dozens of banks declared to be bankrupt. Leading companies lost its positions in the financial rankings and the dollar rate was falling. While at the same time, China was growing very fast. Its GDP was increasing sustainably from year to year. How come? It's not that the Chinese hieroglyph to the world crisis has two meanings. The first means danger, the other means opportunity. We think it's really important to see more opportunities than dangers. And because of the main purpose of human beings is development and growth, it's really necessary to use 100% of those opportunities which the crisis holds. So the Chinese proved that the statement is correct. And that's why today we Kolya, Kolya, I know that you're a little bit nervous, but to my mind it's not the right moment to take this tour with you. Um, ladies, I know you're worrying. Uh, calm down, this is the best part of our presentation. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Panda goes here. So, today our topic, of, our topic is recovery made in China. Me, Nikolai, and my associates from the High School of Economics, St. Petersburg branch. Ekaterina and Dina will show you today a recovery puzzle consisting of four parts. Each part indicates a unique feature or action which was used by the Chinese government to recover after crisis. So let's start and get this ball rolling. To begin with, we should talk about the Chinese main competitive advantage. It is cheap and disciplined labor force, which gives China the opportunity to attract production capacity not only of neighboring Asian companies, but also of large multinationals. Thus, directly or indirectly, China receives huge investments in its economy, as well as the access to the advanced technology. So, cheap and disciplined labor force, investments, and international technologies help China to take the lead in the real sector of economy, especially the industrial unit. I think I have read about this. It seems to me that the greatest contribution to the high growth of China was given by manufacturing industries. The most dynamic of them is engineering. Its annual growth rate exceeds 20%. Whoa. China ranks first in the production of electronics, ships, fertilizers, coal, steel, all of these things provide the annual growth of GDP. So, dear audience, we have shown you the first part of the Chinese recovery puzzle, which is the growth of GDP. Money must work. Do you agree with me? Therefore, I suppose the Chinese government must have made some huge investments? Yep, you are dead on. Uh, one of Chinese crisis management measures is investment abroad. The total amount of money invested in other countries' economies by the Chinese government exceeds the limit of 60 billion dollars. We can distinguish two directions of foreign investment made by China. The first is investment in countries' economies where the economic recovery is expected. For example, US economy. By the end of 2009, there was a significant investment of 9.6 billion dollars into 60 biggest U.S. companies, for example, Citigroup, Pfizer, AIG, and so on. The second direction, investment in countries' economies in order to decrease an energy resources addiction of China. Here you can see a list of countries where there are already contracts or negotiations being held about the buying out of the enterprises. In addition, investments in the unstable economies of European area in buying up of their debts allow China to get partners and to lobby its interest on the international scene. Dear audience, my colleagues have told you about the second component of the Chinese recovery plan, which is investments. And Dina, Kolya, can you tell the audience and me something about the inner measures of the Chinese government? Of course I do. The government of China invested a lot of money in the development of national infrastructure objects and social programs. The core volume of money 
about 38% was given to the construction of railway and highway roads, power stations, Tina, and so on. But Tina, wait now, please stop. Of course, I have studied economics in the university, but I can't understand how the building of roads can help to overcome the world financial crisis. I will try to explain. So, the thing is, the majority of Chinese population belong to the poor strata of the society. And only since recently they obtained the opportunity to get gratuities in case of diseases, unemployment or disabilities. The, in order to provide more social justice, the tax burden was lowered for the people with low income level and was increased for the well paid. The main principle of Chinese crisis management program is to increase in the consumption. In order to compensate the reduction of external markets, China ranks first of annual growth of inner consumption, which is 18%. In comparison, US has only 2%. But we also should remember about the band system in China. Yes. It has a really interesting structure. All of the Chinese banks have one certain interest rate, set by the central bank. This rate brings them considerable and stable profits. This rule is also the same for foreign banks. It means that they must have the same interest rate as other Chinese banks. So this grants a healthy situation in a bank sphere and gives people more confidence in their future. And also I have something to add. Uh, the keys of the Chinese welfare is the mentality of its population. The Chinese are traditionally more orienting on savings and accumulation. In contrast, for example, Americans who get used to live on credit. Thank you guys for a clear explanation. Now I understand that Chinese develop social security and different insurance arrangements, and it lets them to spend more money on buying goods and products. This appeals to the fact that increasing of consumption by the Chinese inhabitants closes the circulation of assets within the country. Yes, so we have showed you the third action of our recovery plan, plan which is a social security programs. However, I hope you will agree with me that the next logical question will be how did the Chinese manage to find such smart measures of success? Actually, I wanted to ask the same. Dina, you should know. I suppose yes. The matter is that the Chinese remember about the Asian financial crisis in 1997. The hidden motive of that crisis was similar. Asian tigers were rapidly growing. It contributed to a massive influx of capital into these countries, growth in corporate and government debts, overseeing economies, and the boom of the real estate market. During 1997-98, the economies of um, China, Indonesia, and other Asian tigers were characterized by the depreciation of national currency, the fall of stock indices, and rising inflation. So, the Chinese has taken their previous mistakes into account and has drawn a conclusion. Yes, Dina is absolutely right. If you don't want to lose, you should learn from your mistakes. Moreover, most Financial Times experts note a quick reaction of the Chinese government to the beginning crisis. So now we have sort of clear picture. And the fourth part of our recovery puzzle is an Asian crisis experience of 1997. All right, um, however, the next question I have is how does an average person live in China? What about the culture? Thank you, Koda, for a question. We have been talking about social security not without a reason. One of the core problems of China is poverty. It makes the majority of people to work 12 hours a day with only two days, worth, days off in a month. Also, the well-known policy, one family, one child, may lead China to the status of the most rapidly aging country of the world. The result of this policy is the situation that the number of boys exceeds the number of girls. But girls in turn don't want to marry, they put education and career first. That's a worldwide tendency, huh? <laughs> so... Okay, but I suppose that the developed nations refer China to an assembly shop floor. Am I right? Yes, it's one of the Chinese problem. The lack of own for world famous brands slows down the further development of China. The government of China is really worried about the recent survey made by the BBC in 28 countries. You know that only 40% of foreign citizens think positively about China. But lately, China has started its own TV world channel, CNC World, called to tell the truth about the country. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, as all objects has its shadows, uh, crisis management measures also cast a shadow on culture development of China. While we are reading economical reviews about Chinese economy, we may think that it's so great to live there. The economy is rising steadily and rapidly. The economic rates are so high. However, an average person still has a lot of problems. There is always a fly in the ointment. Yes. So, thereby, we have presented you four parts of the Chinese recovery puzzle, which together give the whole picture. Surplus state budget, big savings within the economy, and first places in the industrial sector help China to increase its GDP and, consequently, gold and foreign currency reserves. Also, collaboration with different countries allows to have partners on the international scene and is the guarantor of the world security. Social crisis management and the healthy situation in the bank sphere encouraged people to feel more secure and motivated them to buy more products. Attention to the past experience and quick reaction saved the Chinese economic policy from previous mistakes. All of these measures have helped China to recover after the crisis and to improve millions of lives. So, summing up, uh, the main principle of Chinese crisis management program is a rational combination of internal development and external openness. All right, enough of formal speech. Now it's time to talk about my panda. Uh, you know, for ages, China developed separately from the other world because of its language and mentality. However, till 1984, there was a tradition of panda diplomacy. When China wanted to establish great relationships with other countries, it gave giant pandas as a gift. We want to follow this great tradition and give you these stickers with pandas as a keepsake in order to provide good relationships between us whenever the results of today's competition will be. Here are our sources. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.